Ah, uh, the holidays. A time for giving, a time for getting, and a time for going and going and going and going and going. And going. When you need a break, we're here, helping you make sense of all the good and the going of the holidays. Happy holidays from all of us at UBNRadio.com. Jump off that exhausting hamster wheel and into balanced living with Dr. Marissa. Her mission, to be a beneficial presence on the planet. Her purpose, to be your personal advocate to live, love, laugh, learn. Her life motto, don't die wondering. Take back your life with Dr. Marissa Fett on UBNRadio.com. And welcome. My name is Dr. Marissa. And I am your cheerleader for a happy life 88% of the time. And you are tuned into Take My Advice, I'm Not Using It. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa every Tuesday at naturally high noon on UBN Radio, Universal Broadcasting Network, broadcasting out of the Sunset Gower Studios. And now on NBC News Radio, KCAA AM 1050, and soon to have two FM channels coming next year. Uh, out of Loma Linda, and that is on Thursdays at 7 p.m. So thank you for tuning in. Thank you for being part of my listening audience. Like-hearted and love-minded folks all across the planet. Welcome to, we have new listeners in India, new listeners in China, France, um, North Carolina. <laughs> I guess that follows in along the, the list of international, but uh, very glad to have you. And uh, happy, happy holidays. Merry Christmas for those of you who are celebrating that. Uh, happy Kwanzaa and Happy Hanukkah. It is the season of the joy ride of your life. And this is a show about hope and happiness. So there's no gossip, no scandal, and no K-words, no Kardashian talk at all. Instead, I have guests and topics that celebrate not what's wrong with people, not what you get on the air and CNN constantly negative news, but what is right with people, with places, and with things in this thing called life. So that's what we're doing here on the air, and I can't think of a better person to actually bring on to celebrate this season and the meaning of joy or the meaning of inspiration is actually the topic for today than someone who I've known for almost, uh, gosh, it's almost six years, and uh, she's a beautiful, I, I tease her, she's my, I'm, I'm her Chinese twin, so uh, she is uh, uh, Julie Moret, and she's an accomplished speaker and personal coach to Fortune 500 executives, Academy Award winners, and several New York Times best-selling authors. Part of my agape love burrito, as I call it, Reverend Julie and Julie, is a, an agape International Spiritual Center speaker, staff minister, and member of the Executive Leadership Board. She was knighted by the order of the Orthodox Knights of the St. John Russian Grand Priory, alongside Jack Canfield, Don Miguel Ruiz, who was on my show last year, and Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith, my big brother, who's on, been on my show three times, who, and, uh, you know, we would both love him, and he loves us. I'm the little sister, and she just found out because she's my twin, she's also a little sister. <laughs> Julie's work has been featured on the Lifetime television channel. And she will be a featured speaker at TEDx LA 2015. Julie's book, What's Your What? How to Ignite Your Unique Brand of Inspiration on Demand is scheduled for release February 2015. Please welcome to my studio, Julie Moret. <laughs> Hello, darling. It's my absolute pleasure to be with you. Oh, and it is mine. Thank you for coming to the uh -huh. studio. I'm going to ask you to just move a little closer. And yeah, there sure. you go. Sure. It's going to be your friend today. Hi there. I, it's because I'm so shy mm -hmm. that I know to be right up against <laughs> the mic. I know about your shyness. Yes, sarcasm <laughs> is another service that I offer. <laughs> but uh, welcome. And I, I really wanted us to talk about something that... Um, people think are is is just limited to artists mm -hmm. right artists are inspired or scientists 
create in, uh, uh, by inspiration, but for the average person, inspiration isn't something that happens every day or more than once in a lifetime. And you are an expert in inspiration. Obviously, the book uh, captures that. But I wanted us to, to spend a little Christmas Eve time yes. to talk about that. Yeah, it's so important, especially at this time of year. You know, how do you how do you get inspired? How do you stay inspired? Mm. And and especially for me, how do you get inspired no matter what? You know, right. no matter what. Um, and I think that I've been on this journey of inspiration since I was a kid, and mm -hmm. I didn't even know it. But there was something in me that always wanted to know. You know, why am I here? What's the whole purpose of all this? And and why stay here? Mm. You know, I grew up doing astral travel and energy and seeing angels and spirits. And so it really, I needed to find a reason why to be here because I really liked where I went, you know? Interesting. And Interesting. Let's go, let's rewind there, right there. That's <laughs> a, that's an unusual, I mean, you, you're looking at her now, beautiful. And, I look normal. And, I don't uh, look yes. like I see ghosts, do I? <laughs> no, she, she sees dead people. So let's talk about that for a second. Did you come from a family that encouraged that kind of thing? No, or? not at all. You know, I think um, I think that it was a natural, it's very interesting. I think my true nature, nature is one of an in, initiate, somebody that's a seeker. Mm. And I grew up very much in the mysteries and I just, my mom called me a do it yourself kid. Mm. I would go in my room and I would be there for hours and hours and I would be brewing. I would be creating things in consciousness. Interesting. And I didn't know that at the time, but I would, you know, I'd see angels and spirits as easily as you see somebody you sit across the dinner table to with. Wow. And and then I grew up and I got into the whole motivational NLP world and I was real, you know, pumped up in that. Mm -hmm. NLP being neuro linguistic programming. Uh -huh. Yes. And and now I've kind of circled back into um, inspirational speaking, which is different than motivation. Motivation is like the big rah rah, mm -hmm. get pumped up for the moment. Right, right. And inspiration is when you wake up to that that spark in your soul hmm. when you when that's then that thing that you're born for that you're meant for when you give way to it when you, mm. you when you usher it in when you mm. give it a platform mm -hmm. and so that's that's really become the whole thrust of my work is that I get up and I do inspirational talks that are humorous or storytelling, mm -hmm. humorous, wrenching, whatever it is, it's storytelling. But in the midst of it all, the intention is alchemy. Mm. The intention is to have something shift that whether it's the music that's played beneath me when I speak or or with the choir, you all are in the mm -hmm. Agape International mm -hmm. Spiritual Center Choir, whatever it is, that moment when something creates a shift in a person and they feel that burst of inspiration and so it's learning how to create for yourself a body of tools. How do you get inspired? Mm -hmm. And 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 we we have tools. There are things we can do to juice our environment, mm -hmm. which which will uh, trigger our own natural inspiration. So I'm going to put the moose on the table, as I say, the Canadian version of uh, the <laughs> elephant in the room. And if you're listening and you're going, oh, it's all good and well for you to talk about inspiration, but I can't make the bills. Mm -hmm. I can't pay. I don't know. I don't have money for Christmas for presents. I don't. I hate my job. I'm not inspired at my job. I can't leave my job because I need the money for rent. So why are you even talking about something that is so beyond my mm -hmm. grasp? How do you, you know, you, you say inspired no matter what. No matter what. So so when, when someone says something like that, I mean, the reality, sure, I want to be inspired, mm -hmm. but I'm so worried or I am... You know, I don't have time to be inspired. It's it's kind of like that back room of books and magazines that say, you know, when I have time, I will read them. Right. Mm -hmm. So when I when I, you know, get my mom out of the hospital or get my kids through college or, uh, you know, make enough to to turn this mortgage around, then I will be inspired. Right. So so how, what do you say to me? What I say to you is that that's, that's how I even got into this. Mm. I'm not somebody that was born happy. I, I have to do like a consciousness workout to be happy. Mm. I have to have mental discipline. And that's what I would say to any person going through any challenge at any time mm -hmm. is that you handle the momentary details. You, you handle what you need to handle, but you must do something in your consciousness if you want to change the outward experiences of your life. Mm -hmm. And for me, I call it a consciousness 
a workout, you know, and you got to break a sweat on it. You right. have to be disciplined. Right. I had an experience recently where I was I was working with a literary agent and um, she sent me an, an, a text message saying she wanted to set up a call. Mm-hmm. And the first thought that went through my mind is, oh, they're not going to publish my book. Mm-hmm. You know, the other shoe is about to drop. Mm-hmm. And I was so surprised that given that I have devoted my life to personal growth and transformation, <laughs> that an old pattern like that right. could still be the first thing to jump there, mm-hmm. you know, that the mm-hmm. other shoe's about to drop. Mm-hmm. Worst and, case scenario. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and what came to me is, you know what? If the other shoe drops, it just means I'm meant to go barefoot, you know? It's about reframing yeah. things because no matter what you're going through, and I've been through plenty, yes. if you can reframe it in your consciousness, the universe has to shift and adjust itself to meet you at the level of your knowing. Mm. That might sound highbrow, but it works over and over again. I have so many examples of that. Yeah, yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you. And of mm-hmm. course, you know when I put the moose on the table, I'm just going to the other end because I think it's important to meet people where they are. Absolutely. It, it, the workout for me mm-hmm. is people go, do you always wake up happy? Like, do you always wake <laughs> up that? Because I'm always, you know, I'm your cheerleader for yes, yes. You know, putting on your life jacket with a silver lining and your, your midlife crisis advocate uh, or interventionist, unless mm-hmm. you really want a Corvette. But I... I'm not always positive, mm-hmm. and it is a choice. Yeah. I, you know, it's that the, my workout is choice. My my muscle is choice that I am going to focus on, because there will always be something that isn't right. Mm-hmm. Always, yeah. because that's just the way it's. I call it contrast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've been yes. listening to Esther yes, Drake, yes. but the choice mm-hmm. that discipline that you're talking about is. It has to be rooted, though, I believe, in in a in a faith, an un- unflappable faith mm-hmm. that the universe is friendly. And I know you agree with that one. I mean, yeah. I, well, maybe not. I shouldn't say that. But but for me, I know my turning point was, as Einstein says, the most important question that a human being has to answer is, is the universe friendly or not? Mm-hmm. And if you say the universe is not friendly, it's going to be a long haul. Right. 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 So if if I choose to believe and at some point, I think as a child, you must have known that the universe was friendly. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it was your parents or your own inner sense that everything was going to be okay, And because of that, it was a support in order for you to to reach out or explore or or do it yourself. Wow. I don't know that I. I had that kind of innate trust or faith that the universe is friendly. Mm. I think that I had to start so far down at the bottom that that I just had to believe that it was possible. Mm. I didn't have the faith to start off with, but I was willing to be willing okay. that maybe it's good. Okay. I'm willing to be willing right, that maybe right, it's right, good. Right, right, right. And then I had to go into this approach of... Um, the, you can have what you can hold in consciousness, mm-hmm. which is uh, I was doing a, a visioning process the other day. Michael Beckwith, who you mm-hmm. had here, uh, does the life visioning process. And it's it's not visualization where mm-hmm. you imagine, you know, I want the red Corvette. I want the red Corvette. It's visioning where you open up to what is the big plan for me? Mm-hmm. You know, what is the greatest, highest it, vision for my life. Mm-hmm. And so I sat down the other day and I was going into this visioning process. What is the greatest, highest vision for my life? And the way that the process works is you get images or pictures or sounds or symbols or right. something that comes forward. And I did it and I got a great big black screen, like nothing, uh-huh. <laughs> like, like there's no vision. And then I sat and I went a little deeper and all of a sudden this little bubble, like a cartoon bubble came up uh-huh. and it was a picture of something I'd really been wanting in my family. And then I sat for a little bit longer and another bubble came up and it was a picture of five published books, well-published books, Mm. which is part of my plan. And then another bubble came up and it was me speaking in a certain venue. And before I knew it, the whole screen was filled with these bubbles Mm. of my best case scenarios. Mm -hmm. And then I heard this voice say, you can have what you can hold in consciousness. Mm -hmm. You got to be willing to be willing, you've got to be willing, you know, and start there. If you don't, if, if life is not looking so glorious right now, mm-hmm. then maybe be willing to be willing to mm-hmm. have it be so. Mm-hmm. And, and 
I had a good question uh, actually from a from a listener slash client who said, but if I hope for those things and they mm-hmm. don't come true, the disappointment is crushing. So it's better for me not to have that as a possibility so mm-hmm. that if it does happen, it's a pleasant surprise. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I get that. It's sweet. And we can stay in nice, tight little boxes if we want to. Mm-hmm. But there's this moment when, you know, it's like the little chick that's inside of an egg and it keeps pounding and pounding. Eventually, you just got to crack open the egg mm-hmm. if you really want to see what's out there. Mm-hmm. And you do that by beginning to, by what ifing yourself. Right. You know, right. even though it might be risky because you may not get it the way you want it. But something else may happen because maybe if you can just get the smallest, like that mustard seed of possibility, mm-hmm. of faith, mm-hmm. that if I move something in my consciousness, then the external world has to respond to that. If everything is energy, something's going to respond. So you what if yourself, right? you know, what if the right. best case scenario happened? What if I had that this case with the, the publishing company I'm working with? Um, I, I had the opportunity to speak with somebody who, who works with the highest level people in my business, mm-hmm. people that, that fill 30 seat stadiums. And I was, I was just supposed to be talking to her to get personal advice for my business, right. not that she would work with me. And then in the few days prior to us actually speaking, I what if it. I kind of, st- I found myself in my bedroom mm-hmm. giggling, mm-hmm. thinking like, what a coup. Could you right. imagine? Right. And I could have stopped there. And in fact, I, I wanted to, like exactly what you're, you're talking about. Yeah. Because my husband said, well, maybe she'll want to work with you. And I got mad because I didn't want him to do that to me for the same reason, that then I would be let down. Right. 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 I just wanted to think that it's just this one little box. We're just going to get together and we're going to talk about guidance she might have. And then she'll go on her way and I'll right, go on mine. Right. right. But mm-hmm. I what ifed myself mm-hmm. and I let myself go there in fantasy and giggling in my bedroom all by myself. Could you imagine? Mm-hmm. Could you fathom? Mm-hmm. And it came true. Yeah. And she yeah. wanted to work with me. So if you want to, if you want something, you gotta, you gotta take a risk. Yes, yes. you gotta take a risk, and you're strong enough that you can handle the disappointment. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. things will shift if yes. you get convicted in your consciousness. What's exciting? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> What's exciting mm-hmm. about your work, my work, where we are in the planet is that we are the possibilities that you're talking about mm-hmm. for your life and for all of the lives of anyone who's listening the tens and hundreds of thousands of people who are going to listen to this show either Mm -hmm. live or on podcast we are finally pecking our way out of this bs belief system paradigm yes that somehow we don't we're not supposed to dream we're not supposed to aspire mm-hmm. that from the, you know, when I was brought, I, you, you, you work hard, you go to school, you get a good job, mm-hmm. right? You get as much school as possible. You get a, a, a good job. You buy a really nice house. Oh, my mother used to drag us everywhere we went on <laughs> holiday and just go to the nicest part. And I hated it. It was just like this. My soul knew this was mm-hmm. not what I was, this is not what my life was going to be about, was just Mm. getting the biggest house and having the nicest car and, 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 you know, getting, having the greatest marriage and I'm happily divorced and having beautiful kids that go to the best schools and Uh then go on great vacations. And that's it. That's your life. That's the box Mm -hmm. that I grew up in. Yeah. That most people who listen to me grew up in. Mm -hmm. And what's so exciting is that we're we're pecking out of the box literally and figuratively that life is supposed to be about aspiring yes and being inspired to i think everybody should write a book i think everybody should try some kind of musical instrument or to sing Mm -hmm. i think everybody should um uh, take I just heard the that you can go to these places and and eat and mm-hmm. they have painting teachers and canvases on the wall that you can learn how to paint. I think everybody <laughs> should go to uh you know the, where you make your own pottery. I think mm-hmm. that everybody and I think everybody should find that gift that may or may not have anything to do with what you're actually getting making money for right now. Yes. But that and that's why I love agape. Mm-hmm. It's growing ground for that. 
I yeah. mean, that's that's what Reverend Michael, that's what Dr. Michael Bernardbeck with my big brother, he set in place. Mm-hmm. It's a place where we get to grow. Right. Every way, any way, like that flash dance uh, song or movie. When you stop dreaming, you die. Mm-hmm. And it's tricky. That's why you need your inspiration tools because we live in a very normalizing culture. Yes. It's very easy to stay mediocre. Yes. It's very easy to stay middle of the road, no making waves, no risking anything. It's such a numbing out Mm -hmm. kind of society that Mm -hmm. we live in. It's Mm -hmm. so easy to stay on that. So that's why you want to get whatever tools you can. And one of the things I love to do is find out what kind of quality wants to wake up in you. Mm. And, you know, qualities of God are things like peace, love, joy, prosperity, abundance, creativity, integrity, justice, truth. All of these qualities, we have all of them within us. Mm -hmm. But usually there's one or two that especially like lights you up, Mm -hmm. sends you. Uh, For me, one of them is freedom. That's my thing. It charges me. So I make sure that next to the area that I meditate in is that I have a picture of Dr. King. When I was a kid, Mm. a kid, I used to sleep with a picture of him under my pillow, which was really bizarre to my mom. It's very bizarre. You know? <laughs> but but there was something in me that was like lit up from way early on. I told this story once at Agape of how um, this really cute guy one time asked me to go out on a date on a Saturday night. And I, I told him, unfortunately, I had other plans. But my plans were so hot that I thought, like, there's no way I could not include him. So I invited him to come with me. And my plans were I was going to drive an hour and a half to a cemetery in the middle of the night on a Saturday night to watch old um, authentic footage of Dr. Reverend Ma- Mike Martin Luther King Jr. Um, that, that just happened to be showing that particular night. Mm. And and because Dr. King's like, that's what lights me up. Mm-hmm. And I could see the glaze. You know that glaze that comes <laughs> over a person's eyes when you know it's just not going to happen. And he yeah. just kind of like politely <laughs> backed away. And so I went, I, you know, Saturday night came. I hopped in my Jeep. I drove an hour and a half, pitch black darkness, pull into the cemetery. I see nothing, nobody around. Uh-huh. I finally find where I'm supposed to be. I sit down. It's like the footage is so old Mm. that you can barely see anything. And you want to know something about an hour into it, I get a tap on my shoulder. And it's cute guy. Ah! And and I was so stunned. He decided not to go to his party. He came to sit there with me. And he was sitting next to me for a while. And after a few minutes, he politely tapped me on the shoulder again. And he said, can you understand anything they're saying because the footage was so authentic oh, right. you couldn't hear it right 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 and so i said no shh because it didn't matter for right, me it was right. like you know being plugged in like getting intravenous like a shot <laughs> like i was just getting so juiced just being in the presence of mm-hmm. and um a few more minutes passed by actually a long period of time passed by almost an hour and he said to me you know can you um can you see any of the images? Can you hear any of the, uh, mm-hmm. of the dialogue? Mm-hmm. And I couldn't on any front, but I still wanted to be there. And so he waited about another hour, and then he said, are you good? And I was like, yeah, I'm good. Like, I'd gotten my fill because yeah. I'd filled myself up with that quality. And we walked out of there, and I married that man. <laughs> <laughs> cute guy you know? husband That's now. Cute yes, husband. if he could handle going to a cemetery yeah. on your freedom let yeah, freedom they don't, ring. They don't have to have the same. They don't have to have the same quality as you, but they got to respect your quality. Mm. You know, so that's that tool. If you find what it is that sends you mm-hmm. that thing, you know, are you, do you love joy? Are you is peace your thing? Are you fierce mm-hmm. about that? Or mm-hmm. justice? Like, what's your thing? And we mm-hmm. all have something mm. that really raises us up. And then you juice your environment with mm-hmm. it. So that way, you help. That's a way to help stay self inspired. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So instead of saying. You know, what do you want to do with your life to a, a my 17 year old? You know, right. where do you want to school? Where do you want to go to school? And what do you want to do? Mm-hmm. If we started asking our kids, what quality turns you know lights you up? Yeah, or yes. be observant. Just notice. Mm-hmm. You'll see. You'll mm-hmm. see it happen, and Interesting. it'll be shocking. Interesting. Yeah, because my my little one Sarah is it's peace she was picked mm-hmm. to be you know the the bully peacemaker mm-hmm. uh, conflict manager in, in elementary school peace she wants peace yeah. uh, the older one i think um justice that's mm-hmm. her you know she wants things to be fair 
Right. That's her thing. Interesting. So, so, so for those of you who are saying, I don't have time to be inspired, it's as easy as that mm -hmm. is to find the quality that yeah. you are lit up by in life. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of an in, right? That, that's a first in. And then you, you just, you source your environment with it because you're chemically impacted, biochemically impacted by everything that surrounds you. So you may as well juice it in a positive way, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. So have a quote. I have, you know, great quotes that just light me up or pictures or um, I, I'm speaking at Agape soon again and I, I pull um, goddess cards and I just pulled this mm -hmm. card, Baba Yaga, and it's wild woman and it's this crazy looking witch on a broom and she's like <laughs> flying in the air and, and like wild woman, just the thought of that sends me you know mm -hmm. like to be that free because that's mm -hmm. freedom mm -hmm. you know I showed my son I said look I'm gonna go do that at agape <laughs> <laughs> now does he have that same glazed look that comes over him as your husband did because uh, I'm just let's go back for a second to your mom I mean yeah. so so you grew up in a pretty regular home totally regular home. and and Very how many brothers and sisters two sisters two sisters mm -hmm. and you were the middle, middle. young girl. you were the middle okay that's usually a consultant one <laughs> so for, <laughs> we're both in psychology but um so you were the middle and and they they did they think you were nuts i mean when you come out and say i see ghosts or i see i mean did you share all of that you know i don't think I shared any of it. Okay. I think the only bizarre thing they may have thought was that when I was little and it was bedtime, I couldn't wait to go to bed because uh -huh. I would run to my bedroom and I knew that as soon as I fell asleep, I, I would be, I was in Atlanta, Georgia, and I would f see that silver cord down below me and I'd be rising up above the red clay and I would smell the treetops and I would be flying mm. and it was freedom. It was freedom. Mm -hmm. So it's that. So you theme didn't that tell. Always you didn't there. tell anybody about that. I didn't tell anybody there. I mean, there. No. Yeah. No. So so okay. So so you didn't tell anybody there. And then did you do like the normal things, like go to college? I did and none of the normal. You did things. none of the. No. And when they I were was, okay with that. When I was a teenager. Um, no, they weren't okay with that. Okay. Um, I don't know that they're still okay with what is. <laughs> okay. But um, I got... <laughs> I'm so glad I'm getting the, like, the, 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 the real story. Because, I mean, because it is, it does take, it takes it some takes courage, courage. To, to, to kick out of that box. It really does. Right? I come from a family of business people and very conservative people. And I think what happens is, you know... It also, it also takes a, a moment when, I, I was going to say when I started to become successful and then they could see I was making a certain amount of money or I was working with certain people right. or a certain level of prestige, that that was a turning point. But you know what else was a turning point? When I got so comfortable with who I was mm -hmm. that I shared it more freely, mm -hmm. and when I got to the point as a young adult where I started sharing some of my spiritual experiences, mm -hmm. every single person in my life has had something I found out my right. grandfather, who is as hardcore and strict as they come, he told me that when his mother passed, he was standing at the, the grave site, mm -hmm. and he felt a hand on his shoulder and comfort, and he assumed it was his sister. And when he turned around, there was nobody, nobody there. there. And mm -hmm. he said to me he knew it was his mother. Mm. And my mother told me when she went through her divorce that she was sitting in the judge's or the attorney's office, and she actually floated up above herself and she watched the proceedings from the ceiling. Mm. Now, these are people that are so far from, I see dead people. Right, right. <laughs> but we do. Right, you know? right. But, but right, I think everybody right. has had some kind of experience that's mm -hmm. not quite explainable, which brings me to one of the, the main points I wanted to get to is, you want to jump in? Yes, okay. I, I actually want to take a station break. Sure. If you've just tuned in, we are we're having a fascinating conversation yes. and energy and freedom <laughs> ringing conversation with uh, Julie Moret, a friend of mine who uh, is an incredible inspirational speaker. And you're listening to Take My Advice. I'm not using it. Get balanced with Dr. Marissa. And we'll be back in two and two after this station break with some sponsors who make the show possible. Be back in two and two. What's the most powerful word on the planet? Yes. If you want to be inspired by award-winning authors and teachers who write about the many facets of YES and how it transforms life and one's love of life, then pick up the YES book today. Jill Cooper and Exalt Road Publication 
brings you stories of transformation, confession, research, poems, and manifestos that witness the power of yes. Available at Amazon and ExultRoad.com. The Yes Book, a perfect affirmative gift for the holidays. Say yes, I want to celebrate my life. Have you ever had a sweet potato cookie? Be the talk of the holiday table with yam good cookies and four unique tastes. All sweet potato with either pecan, ginger pecan, pineapple coconut, even topped with almonds. Available in West LA. So follow us on social media and visit www.yamgoodcookies.com to order. A holiday treat launched in the season of Thanksgiving that will now be enjoyed all year long. So have a yam good holiday. And we're back. You are tuned in to Take My Advice, I'm Not Using It. Get Balanced with Dr. Marissa, also known as the very honorable moniker, the Asian Oprah. And I'm going to be giving away something at the end of the show, so please stay tuned after we finish talking to Julie. But before that, the last promo you heard was Yam Good Cookies. And I have to tell you, I actually, one of the best things about this job is that I get to taste test. And uh, Narcy sent me a little package of it. I couldn't really get a taste of all of them because my daughters uh, took over and they absolutely love it. So if you haven't tried yam cookies, please do find them online and uh, order some. You'll you'll be the hit of your Christmas party. So I wanted to say shout out to Narcisse and thank you so much for the yam cookies. All right. And we are back with Julie Moret, yes. who is an inspirational speaker and, and has a fabulous holiday question for you in this season of joy and the season of miracles. And the question is, if you ask for a miracle, can you handle it? Mm. And I think that's a really deep question because there are so many times in our lives where we, we jump into prayer. You know, like, Lord, please, I really want this. You know, right. let this happen. Mm-hmm. But my question is, if you ask for it, can you handle it when you get it? Mm. And one of the things that happened recently in my family was we had a, a very bizarre experience. My, we woke up one morning and there was blood on the floor. There was um, about a, a do- half dollar size amount of blood sopping on the on the carpet like considerable amount Hmm. and we knew it came from our cat and we couldn't find where and we were really concerned and our cat seemed fine and um it's it's a big deal to take him into a vet so we were trying not to do that so he seemed like he was okay so we let it go a few days later we wake up and there are about 10 great big drops of blood all around the dining room floor blood so that's scary so that's like we need to take him in. Even right. though it's a problem, he's an older cat. He has to go under full anesthesia if you take him in. So right. it's a big deal. Right. But we said we have to do this. As we were driving to the vet, we decided to go into prayer. And mm-hmm. the prayer was, I'm ready for a miracle. Mm-hmm. Because I had noticed that for both my husband and I, we went immediately to the other shoes about to drop. Right. That old pattern right. of, you know, this is his time, he's old, and all that thinking. And then I just switched it up and I said, no, let... I'm grateful for the miracle already. Mm -hmm. I say yes to the miracle already. I'm grateful, I'm thankful, and I'm allowing the miracle to be. So we go into the vet. She puts him under full anesthesia, checks his whole body out. Everywhere you can bleed, she's looking. There's no sign. Hmm. There is no no answer to this question. Mm -hmm. But she does find that it has a very slight thyroid problem that's easily fixable with medication. Mm -hmm. Now, because we don't take him to the vet because it's such a serious thing, we would never have found that. It would only have taken blood on a floor to get us into the vet. And so as we were driving home with this very nominal situation that's treatable, we started trying to figure out where could the blood have come from? And then I said, no, if you ask for a miracle, can you handle it when it arrives? Right. Let's let this be a miracle. Let's not need to do an investigation. Right, right, right. You know? Right, and right. we dropped it, and our cat's fine. Yeah. So yeah. that's like, can you handle it mm-hmm. when you get it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. That's big. It, it is big. It is big. It it speaks to me uh, of, of that where we, you use the word consciousness. Mm-hmm. Where is where do you choose to let your mind go? Mm-hmm. And knowing that if you, you always have a choice. If you, if you, 
you know, tie your 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 underwear and <laughs> knots. <laughs> going somewhere where there is no answer. Right. Ha- why did this happen? You know, who's to blame for it? Mm-hmm. Um, um, why is this happening to me? Um, um, is this punishment for something that I've done? Uh, you know, should I have? I never should have done this. Or, um, it, it, you know, th- someone someone's to blame for this. That that thinking, that mm-hmm. consciousness, right, right, is a consciousness that keeps us out of joy. Absolutely, all the time. And what people don't. Um, aren't conscious of mm-hmm. <laughs> what, what they don't realize is it's 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 simple it's not easy mm-hmm. I, I agree it's not easy but it's simple choice you know people ask me all the time how are you I say I'm happy and they go oh that's nice boy I've never heard of that are you why are you happy mm-hmm. you know what happened and there's a lot of great things that happened to me but I say it's just I'm happy because it's a choice. Yeah, I'm happy and the reasons will follow. Yes. You know? Yes. Decide that it's so. That's that spiritual discipline. Mm-hmm. That's why, you know, to that to that listener that might be thinking it's Christmas time and I don't have the money to pay the bills or to buy the gift mm-hmm. I want to get or all those questions, the, it, it goes back to can you establish for yourself, like the best gift you could possibly give yourself is some kind of practice, whatever your faith is, where you Mm -hmm. take a few minutes, you begin your day in gratitude. Mm. Gratitude grows. You start off with gratitude, your life will produce for you more reasons, Mm -hmm. more good reasons to be grateful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you develop this discipline. It really is a workout, especially for those of us that just weren't born happy, you know, that had to build that muscle up. Right. And have to maintain it and have to choose it on a daily basis. And as you do, your life will reflect that. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 and I'm a perfect example. Just in this last year, I picked up a new habit, mm-hmm. and I call it um, um, extreme gratitude. Mm-hmm. And when I wake <laughs> up, I'm just, I'm just thank you, 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 thank you. Yes. you know, and then when I go to bed, I'm like, oh God, I love my bed. I love the <laughs> feeling of my bed. Me I love too. my bed. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We are sisters. And then, <laughs> yes, we are, right? And then and then I take that first sip of coffee in the morning, and mm-hmm. it's like, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So I'm, I end up saying, like, thank you probably a couple hundred times the whole mm-hmm. day. And I just thought, you know, let me just try this. This this was probably a year ago, and I did it for six months. And mm-hmm. in, in six months... Like nothing happened right away. I mean, I had great things happen, but Mm -hmm. I mean, the extent to which things began to happen with, you know, I got uh, contact to do an article for one newspaper that went to another newspaper that went to a fashion magazine by Marie Marie Claire, the Hearst magazine, right? Uh And then, you know, one little blog went to a chapter in a book and now to an actual book. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, the 21 day fast is going into a fast. And then I get not one but two awards just in this last six months, you know, mm-hmm. national big awards. I mean, in all of that, I, I'm, I know it's because of my practice of the, the gratitude. I know that the, I, as soon as I steroided it. Yes. <laughs> your life it, had to come it, up with the reasons. It did. It did. <laughs> and so I absolutely, if you, if you don't feel happy, I don't care. Just... <laughs> <laughs> just choose to get that feeling and I and I have my clients often just pick a, a memory so mm-hmm. your 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 tap on the shoulder when the cute guy yeah, right yeah, is a yeah. great go-to memory mm-hmm. that makes you that gets you into that that feeling tone or that that consciousness that positive consciousness absolutely yeah so give me another inspiration tool before I'm gonna milk you here before okay, we uh, let's see so I do the qualities. <laughs> Um, you know what else I do is is a way of finding out what you're meant for, what you're really meant mm. for. And one of the things you can do is um, go through all the old notebooks, letters, emails that you've ever received from people and write, make a list of all the adjectives that have ever been used to describe you, mm. all the positive adjectives. Ah. And what you do is you sort them into groups. Uh-huh. And you take a look at the, the the most common ones. You can also send out a, a mass email blast or a Facebook request and yeah. have everybody just send in like, what's one or two qualities you best you think describe me? Yeah. And then you took take a look at the top two or three, the most used ones, mm-hmm. 
and you will see that you have been known. Mm. You have been seen even by the people that you didn't think knew you, mm. even by my family when I did it. The people I didn't think would ever really see or get the real me, right. they all get it. Mm. And so when you get that kind of clarity reflected back to you about that quality that you're here to be and shine as, mm -hmm. then you have more, then you, it makes life easier. Mm -hmm. Decisions are more clear. They're, they either fit into that mm -hmm. or they don't. Mm -hmm. So it's a yes or a no. Mm -hmm. I remember uh, the moment that I finally realized what it is I'm meant to do. And it came on a phone call. I had been friends with um, a very well-known artist many years ago. And at the time, he was quite successful. And then there was a, a long period of time where we had lost touch complete, completely, but mm -hmm. I had kept up with him, and I knew he was, like, supernova successful. And <laughs> then, because uh, I would see him, you know, exhibited at the best galleries and newspapers and all that. And then uh, just a couple of years ago, he called me up completely out of the blue. Mm -hmm. And it was great to catch up. We talked about our families, the whole thing. And I noticed this old feeling coming up as we spoke, this feeling that I'm always the wingman. I'm always the one at the side of the really successful person. Uh -huh. And I didn't like the feeling and I was ready to get off the phone. And he said, well, before you do, I just wanted to call and thank you because you had been my muse. Hmm. And I didn't know, I got off the phone and I didn't know if I should be offended or complimented. I had to go yes. look up muse. What, is that? <laughs> what exactly does that mean? And it meant source of inspiration. Mm. And it was like having a spiritual chiropractic adjustment. Mm. I looked Love back it. at my life and the whole, ever since a young child, my role in my family, my role had always been source of inspiration. Mm. And so I was telling a girlfriend of mine, so, so that's my role. Mm -hmm. It should pay me money. You know, my girlfriend was like, yeah, and he should have paid you money. Yeah. <laughs> and when she said that, I like... The blood drained out of my head. I had to get off the phone immediately. I ran to my storage unit, something I had not have thought of in decades. Mm -hmm. I pulled out this old shoebox, mm -hmm. and it was filled with my correspondence with the artist. I had lived in New York City. He lived in Paris. And our correspondence was that um, I would write him these long dissertations. What is life? What is God? Philosophizing on everything. Why am I here? Uh -huh. My tortured self. And he would write me back, but it would be one canvas of his work. Mm. with an ins a poem inscripted to me. And at the time, he had said, take really good care of these because they're going to be worth a lot of money. I hadn't paid attention to that. Right. So when my friend said, and he should have paid you, it woke something up in me. So I he took did. this batch of them, uh -huh. and I sent it to a curator in New York, somebody who could kind of help put them in, in a nice restored shape and store them for me because I have no place for that kind of thing in my house now. And um, so my, my friend was taking care of the artwork, and then she called me up and she said, you know you have a fortune here, right? Mm. And I just giggled myself because I thought, I that thing that you're meant for will pay its way. Right. When you're on it, it uh -huh. will pay its way. And now I make a living doing it. Right. You know, I, I, I'm right. an inspirational speaker and it pays me well. Yes. So when you find that thing, and when I did this process of, you know, asking everybody to send in an adjective or I, I got mm -hmm. hundreds and hundreds of responses the top one, hands down, was inspiration. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. maybe used from different words, mm -hmm. but always inspiring, inspiration. Mm -hmm. So that's a great thing that anybody can do. Right, and right, it's very right, enlightening. Right, right, right. Well, my two adjectives for you are beautiful, Thank inside you. and out, and inspirational. Absolutely. Lovely. And witty, since you're my <laughs> twin. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I learned in Morocco, it takes beauty to see beauty. So catch that. There you go. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. It, it, and that reminds me of something that I heard on stage. I can't remember who said it, but the the, the BS, the current belief system mm -hmm. around inspiration is like I open the show with, you know, when I get enough money or when yes. I'm in that stable thing, then I can afford to be inspired right. or follow my bliss, so to speak, mm -hmm. when I have enough. So have and then be no. right when it's actually what you just pointed out. It's mm -hmm. be. And the have will follow. Was that Mary Morrissey? Was, I, I think so. Was just I think so. Agape. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. It so was brilliant. Wasn't that brilliant? It, it was like. Be it and then you'll have it. Be it and have it. You'll have it. And that's an interesting, one of the best YouTubes, and I forget who, who produced it, but one of the best ones that I saw was uh, an older actor. Oh, I can't. I have photographic memory, just no memory stick anymore. But uh, <laughs> he's, you know, had this, what if we, what if all of us on the planet really knew that it was 
it, it wasn't to be a doctor or a lawyer. Nothing against doctors mm-hmm. and lawyers. It wasn't to be in an Ivy League school. It was to take anything that we feel we are gifted in, in our hearts that we know, that we don't even need the compliments because the compliments are just icing, Mm -hmm. but it's our cake. I call it baking our cake, finding what that cake is, Mm -hmm. or is it a pie, what kind of a cake, what flavor it is. And and when we can find that and are in it, Mm -hmm. then the, the way opens on how the money will be attached to it. Absolutely. If we can find that. And one of the, I love, one of the gifts that I have um, is is being able to work with people to help them do that. Mm-hmm. It's interesting. I just finished my life balance coaching process with a woman who started as a caller on this show. Mm-hmm. You know, she called in. Uh, she was referred by somebody else. And we talked about something. And she ended up, you know, following up and saying, you know, can I work with you? I, I really want to do a Myers-Briggs test because I think that's going to help me figure out what I what I should do next. I hate my job. I'm, you know, I it's but it's a great paying job and I'm afraid. So I don't want to leave that. And and so she thought I was going to help her find a new business or tell her what the new business was going to be. Mm-hmm. And what the what the process that was so beautiful that came out was if you if she had known that I was going to take her on a journey to her. Mm hmm. She would have. She wouldn't have signed up. Exactly. Right. Which right. is what you do too. So we are twins. Yes. So so having her do that and now her her new thing that she's going to do is so energizing and joyful and 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 it, 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 like she's still doing her job, which mm-hmm. is going to fund the seed money. Exactly. But that is why she's here now. She was also here to do what she's doing now. Mm-hmm. And I think I think that the paradigm or that BS that you have to abandon everything that you've done in the mm-hmm. past. There's something wrong with what you've been doing. I think it, it's a hurtful thing. Anything that, that bashes you mm-hmm. is a hurtful thing. So any critical voice that's saying, you know, you should have done that or you should not, or you should stay here, you know, I, I, you know, put them in the passenger seat, right? you know, right. Or, or don't throw them in the trunk because they still had a purpose. But that critic that continues to to you know stop you from following your bliss or yeah, to being and, open with it. And nothing is for nothing. Everything you've ever done, the all those tools, all the things that that you know when I got certified as a rebirther, who knows why I did that, but all those things became pieces inside of me that helped mm-hmm. me better understand people or, or I, I had several years where I worked only one on one with clients. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. so the areas where I didn't know about the human condition, I sure as heck saw them and met them across the, the table from me. Mm-hmm. You know, so I mm-hmm. had this opportunity to be with so many different people going do, through different things. Right. So I think it's all for something. Mm-hmm. It's, it's mm-hmm. all meant for something. And then another key piece is to keep the, the, the top open. Mm-hmm. I've had some people that come to me so clear, like, I just want this. Right. They get very narrow around it. I had one client that came to me many years ago. She was an actress, and she wanted to be on a nighttime drama. Mm -hmm. She knew exactly which one. She wanted a principal role in a nighttime drama. And I said, well, um, I can can work with you on that, but let's leave the the top off. So it's that or anything better. Right. And um, and she said, no, this is what I want. It's 100% this. Yeah. And back then, I was more immature, and I went with her. I, Mm -hmm. I shouldn't have done that. So we went just for that. We worked on it. We worked on it. She got the lead. Right. She got a principal role in a nighttime drama. She was totally thrilled. About six months later, she calls me up, and she is devastated Mm. because she had auditioned for an A-list movie prior to that TV role, Mm. but she didn't think she got it. After starting the TV show, she found out she got it. It was the kind of movie that would have changed her life in an enormous way, Mm. but she already was booked on something else. So I think that's a really sweet, poignant lesson Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. somebody else went through so you don't have to. Right, right. On keeping the roof open for possibility. Know what you want. Get a vision of it. yeah. And then yeah. highest and greatest good. Yeah, and that works you for know? dating too. Yeah. So it's always yeah. this or better, right? For all the single ones, it's always this or better. Yeah. So not to, uh, yeah, but just keep. And dating. to go for qualities when you're thinking about your ideal partner, the the inner qualities, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. 
We are, of course, butting up at, at the end of time. I, I want people to know how to find you for sure, for sure, for sure. So JulieMoret.com, J-U-L-I-E-M-O-R-E-T.com. That's, That's right. my website, and I'll be posting when my book's going to be released and speaking events also on Facebook. Mm-hmm. So and uh, we already there. are going to, uh, I'm going to have Julie on again in February because I want us to talk about how we sabotage ourselves because I think it's a really important topic like why do we do things that we know we shouldn't be doing Mm -hmm. and on that note because you're my twin two two mini questions sure um one is how do we handle egos because you know you talked about you know publishing books and Mm -hmm. you know my work as well and we're you know how how do we stay I mean is where's that middle ground between pride and humility, I guess is the question. And and how much of ego is bad or good? or What's your take on that? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is why do you do what you do? And it's not about the little self. It's because you're a custodian. You're here um, because you were tapped. You know, mm-hmm. it's like a football team. You're in. Mm-hmm. You're going in, you've got a couple plays, and then you're going to be out again. Mm-hmm. So, And you're going in to serve humanity. Mm. You're going in because that quality that you're fine-tuning now and getting clear about what it is, is what you're meant to shine mm. and share in the world. Okay. that That's... that's Period. Period. Yeah. Literally, period. Mm-hmm. That's the... Because some people, if they listen and go, oh, who does she think she is? You know, say that she's an inspirational. She doesn't inspire me. Or, mm-hmm. who, who, you know, <laughs> why? why yeah, I'm just putting that moose on the table. But but yeah. this is the thing. Every, all seven billion of us have a quality that we were placed on yeah. this earth to hone and share. Right. I mean, right. that's where it's coming from. Mm-hmm. That's that's where the, 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 the courage is. It's not about... Mm, look at me I am blah 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 but this is this is what we're here this is the tap right and, and that's that thick skin you know when I when I started speaking a lot Michael Beckwith pulled me aside at one point and he said you know the bigger you get because somebody was offended by um, a pair of shoes I wore one time and it really bothered me oh my goodness I tend to wear some shoes you have some <laughs> heck of shoes I got it I'm a witness to so that. so it, you know <laughs> I, I got a, like all these amazing compliments after a talk you know yeah. wonderful wonderful yeah. wonderful 99 percent and then one, one. Mm-hmm. and I was so impacted by it it made me want to you know not get back on the stage yeah. kind of curl up in a yeah. ball yeah. and Reverend Michael said you're not you're not really living your life until you've got some haters yeah you've got to be so bold yeah. and then it's going to build up your thick yeah. skin yeah. and I'm sensitive as they come so yeah. I don't really know that I have thick skin yet yeah but what I do have is clarity so while I may not be the you know the right flavor for somebody you know their brand of inspiration mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know that that's what I'm here to do right so it may not be for that particular person right. but for many others it is yes and, and so that's i'm the focus. and it's not about me so it's not ego and mm-hmm. it's not like i'm so mm-hmm. I, you know there are many things i can't curse here there are many things i'm not good at <laughs> to put it nicely um that that, that just aren't right you know? i was right. tapped with that right and that's what i'm Thank gonna run you. with yeah yeah it's funny because i had the similar thing happen when i was in the middle of the seal beach salon shooting and holding space and holding the piece and uh, interviewed for quite a few TV shows. And um, someone Facebook messaged me and said, who the heck do you think you are? Mm-hmm. And um, I was destroyed. Again, you know, lots of compliments and thank you, thank you, thank you. You've helped, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. And then that one thing. And uh, when I told Big Brother, he said, why didn't you text me and I said because you were in Europe and and he goes okay but but he goes and and now you know you've arrived yeah and and I went what and he goes that's you know that's the thick skin you're talking about that that it that is a sign that you are shining your light that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. It's it's not easy. Yeah. It's not easy. You have but to be I'm, willing to follow whatever it is that makes your heart race and your pulse pound. Yeah. Come what may. Yeah. Come what may. And we're back to the beginning. And that was Julie Moret. Yes. Thank you so much for coming to the studio. My pleasure. And, the, and this is your going out. And she's going to be back. Yes. But uh, I'm going to end with a very short balance bar today. And where's my magic wand? There it is. Um, 
Merry, Merry Christmas. It is the eve before Christmas Eve. And if you are thinking about how you want to make next year a very different year, then come and uh, take a class with me. I'm teaching at Agape for five weeks starting January 10th. It's five Saturdays doing Balanced Tai Chi Gong, which is the promoting inner peace one breath at a time. Qi Gong, Tai Chi, and a balanced treatment that I learned out of Agape from my big brother. So please do come there. And thank you uh, to all of my sound engineers, station managers at KCAA and uh, UBN have the most amazing holiday. Thank you to uh, Mia and Carlos, Tony and Bill, and my assistant producer, Jarvis, who has been doing a great job this entire year. And uh, th- I'm just so grateful to all of you, too, who have really made this show. The numbers are amazing. My YouTube views went from 300 last year to uh, now over 20,000. So thank you so much. Also, um, if you are... If you like my 21 day fast from complaining with Dr. Marissa, please do help me out and become a co-producer with my app. So I'm using GoFundMe as a platform to collect love hearted people who want to complain less and be the change that they want to see. Next week for our New Year's resolution episode on why we do sabotage ourselves or making sure that we... uh, 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 keep our resolutions to ourselves we're going to do colors so we'll have the kinder gentler dr laura here on the air on take my advice i'm not using it get balanced with dr marissa pay that's p for positive oh i forgot my giveaway i'm giving away a balanced tai chi gong dvd to the first person who on facebook posts um uh, messages me how we'll do facebook messaging and and says free dvd and that'll be my giveaway and christy from chicago got the last one so peace peace and blessings to all of you um tune in next week for take my advice i'm not using it get balanced with dr marissa pay that's p for positive ei remember it's all about balance peace in and peace out Don't turn a page I couldn't see past my rage I wanted to dance but I pushed you away Now I'm on my knees, I'll listen to what you say And you said, be my partner, dance with me Just hold on I will lead Don't be afraid if you can't see I promise you joy in the mystery I wanted to believe in magic So I put on a masquerade I pulled off an amazing hat trick but the illusion didn't last a day I wanted to dance but I pushed you away now I'm on my knees I listen to what you say and you said 